Hello and welcome. This will be a demonstration on how to create ION monitors. Monitors are a part of ION's event management portion within InforOS. These monitors compare incoming documents within ION to predefined rules you've set up prior. They're only for sync type business object documents that come into ION. They send an alert message to one or more users that you identify and assign to the alert. And lastly, monitors are separate from activation policies. If you recall what activation policies are, they sound like points one through three, but after being triggered, they automatically create a workflow. However, in this case, we're not triggering a workflow. We'll be triggering an alert, but that alert message can have a button in it to optionally trigger a workflow by the recipient. So, they're slightly different from activation policies. Now let's look at how they're created in ION. Within the OS platform, under ION, select the Monitors and Workflows tab under the left-hand menu. Now you can click the Add button for a new monitor setup. First, we'll name the monitor. You can provide an optional description, and from there, we'll add the documents that we want to watch. Click the plus sign, and in this business scenario, we'll take a look at the sales order documents. So I'll select sales order, click OK, and now we can see that the document was added there successfully. We don't need to monitor just one document though. We can monitor several when your selected documents are related to each other. For example, a shipment would be related to a sales order, so we can add that as well. And then down below, we can optionally add references, which would be how these documents reference each other or relate to one another. If I briefly hover over the relationship that these two documents have, I can see that the shipment in the from document is related to the sales order through a sales order ID. We can select that reference so that we can use it later in our exercise. With our document selected, our next tab is attributes. Attributes are simply selected fields from the message. So after clicking the add button, we'll see both the sales orders and shipments BODs. First, we'll select the total amount for the sales order. Currently, I'm adding these one by one, but note, it is possible to select several attributes at the same time. Simply press the control button and select. Next, we'll select the document's date and time field. And lastly, we'll choose the back order indicator field. These fields represent the differing data types that can be used as attributes to build a rule deciding if we want to be alerted to this sales order. On the next tab, we'll set our conditions. We'll define our first condition as amount condition and you can see under types, we can decide to select a value comparison where one attribute is compared to a value, a date and time check where we can compare if a date and time field has been selected, and I can select attribute existence if we want to confirm that an attribute exists in the message at all. We'll select the value comparison type and the amount field that we've chosen on the previous tab, and we'll use the math operator greater than and choose a value of 1,000. So our first condition is set to if the sales order is over $1,000. The next condition will be our date condition. So we'll select the date and time check type. This will allow us to see whether it's been a specific amount of time after an attribute. In this case, we'll set it to one day after the document was created. Another condition will be for our back order, and we can see if the attribute exists at all. For example, we can check the back order indicator and see if that has ever been entered onto the sales order. So now we've set our three conditions. Over to the rule tab is where we'll take those conditions that we've previously created and build a rule out of them. Listed are three different rule types. If a value changed, using the value change rule type and the total amount attribute, we can see if someone changed a value from a previous version of this sales order to the next version. For instance, a sales order was created possibly with the value of $1,000, and then later a change was made to the sales order in which the total amount changed to $1,010. From there, we could watch to see if it changed by a certain amount over a certain time frame. 
Another rule type is the document overdue. For example, if the sales order came out, but then the shipment message didn't come within 30 days of the sales order being created, I could be alerted to that instance. So we can be alerted if a document doesn't get produced and is overdue based on the relationship to the first document. The last type is the condition only type, and that's where we can just choose one of these conditions, for instance, the amount condition, and in this case, that will be the only condition we'd want to watch. Additionally, we can also combine conditions. Under the conditions tab, let's create another condition and call it both for simplicity, which we'll set to a combined type. And if the sales order is over $1,000 or if the back order indicator exists, we'll be notified. Once created, under the rules tab, we can create a new rule with the condition only type. And now with the both option, we can combine two conditions in an and or relationship and be notified about that. Note at the bottom of each of these types, we also have an occurrence option by which we can be alerted each time that these rules evaluate to true, or we can set it to alert a certain number of times over a certain period. For instance, we can select five times over a week, and only when it has occurred five times, then we'll be alerted to the condition. For this scenario, we'll keep it simple with the each time occurrence. And now we'll navigate to the alert tab, which is where we define the message that's going to be sent to the user. The message can say, you have a sales over $1,000. We can even put in a variable to specify the actual total amount from the document. Also, you can add translations for this message by selecting the highlighted button to the right. Also, we can create a due date for the benefit of escalations and reminders. For example, we can set the due date to 30 days since the time the alert was created. Let's leave that as the default and we'll elaborate further on. Next is the distribution tab where we decide who the alert is distributed to. After clicking the plus button, we can choose a group of people, a particular user, contact, or email address. The most common use case is a group, which is based out of our OS security system. In our case, we can select a group that has been defined there, click OK, and now we'll see it listed. We can continue to add other groups or users, as many as needed. But the main reason we suggest using a group is that within Infor's OS security service, you can control who's in that group through the list of users there. So you wouldn't have to keep updating the monitor and changing user IDs or email addresses every time someone changes positions within the company, chooses to leave the organization, etc. In that case, you would not need to manage those names right inside the monitor definition. You can manage that in the OS security system. Next, Drillbacks is the section where we can create a link back to the sales order directly within the alert that was set. After clicking the plus sign, we can select the system application that's sending the sales order, for example, in for M3, and then we can select the sales order drillback under View and enter in the values that are required by M3 to link back to that document. We can pull them from the document being monitored, or we can hard code those values in here. Now under the Escalations and Reminders tab, which we discussed briefly prior, we can click the plus button and define an event that would cause somebody to either be reminded about this alert or for it to be escalated to another user. For example, if this wasn't assigned to a user within a certain amount of time after the creation date, or if it wasn't completed, as in a user clicked the Done button in the Alert User interface, either before the due date that was previously entered, i.e. 30 days after the creation, as we've previously set under the Alert tab, or on the due date, or even a certain amount of time after the due date, in our example, we'll set it to seven days after the creation date and save the event details. This will create an escalation and it will escalate to one manager level above whoever it was assigned to, which can be managed within the Infor OS security section. Also, we can keep creating these events sending different types, either escalations, reminders, or even reassignments to other users based on the rules defined here. Finally, the Workflow Settings tab allows us to choose whether to trigger a workflow from this alert. Note that the workflow won't automatically be created. However, the workflow will appear as an option in the alert that the user receives. For instance, the user can receive a message saying, 
you have a sales order over $1,000, do you want to trigger a workflow? The workflow that will be triggered is selected here. So we can select a workflow and fill in any attributes that are required to start that workflow. Again, this is totally optional, and even when the user receives the message, it's optional for them to start the workflow. The user can either resolve the issue with the sales order manually, or they could click the button to start the workflow, which would be designed to automatically take care of the sales order problem. Once finished setting up the monitor, click the Save button, which will save our attributes and alerts. Then click the Power button to activate it, and the monitor will be live and running. And just as a highlight, the Active Monitors page is where users can find information about active monitors and when they were triggered. You can head over there to find further details about the monitor's status, attributes, how many documents have been processed, and much more. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial. If you wish to see more, check out our YouTube channel and subscribe to get the latest content.